Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Welcome back to the lectures in chemistry on the topic of atomic structure and chemical bonding. Uh, my name is Mangala Sundar and I am a professor of chemistry in the department of chemistry in Indian Institute of Technology, Madras and you can see the email addresses here for you to contact. So, in this lecture which we will continue from the previous matrix introduction and also properties of matrices. This lecture is on one of the important aspects in quantum mechanics namely matrix eigenvalue eigenvector problem. The term eigen means characteristic. It is a property of the matrix. Eigenvalue, eigenvector problem is fundamental in quantum mechanics in the sense that the Hamiltonian operator acting on the wave function giving you the wave function back with a constant which is the energy, the total energy. This is an eigenvalue equation for energy. Therefore, most of the solutions of quantum mechanics of real problems at some point of time or other will definitely involve solving them using computers and numerical methods and for that process the matrix eigenvalue problem is one of the best known numerical techniques. Therefore, to understand the basic principles uh, for this course and then use them to analyze the quantum mechanical properties and the measurements etcetera, the concept of eigenvalues and eigenvectors is important. Okay. Now, before we do this let me just uh, recall with an elementary uh, equation a system of linear equations. Let me write down two simple equations. 4x plus 5y is equal to 0 and we have homogeneous equations. And then let me write another equation 2x plus 3y is equal to 0. Let us assume that x and y are such that, that these two equations have to be solved. You will see that the first equation gives you 4x is equal to minus 5y and therefore x is equal to minus 5 by 4 y. Now, if I substitute that x here then what I get minus 5 by 2 x 5 by 2 y because x is minus 5 by 4 and 2 x is minus 5 by 2 y plus 3 y is equal to 0 which is essentially half y is equal to 0 or y is equal to 0. If y is 0 quite obviously x is 0. So, this is a trivial result is not a solution. The reason that this system of equation does not have a non-zero or a non-trivial solution is that these two are both independent of each other, they are linearly independent. If you have two equations in two variables and both are linearly independent, the only solution that you have is that variables are zero. Therefore, it is important for these equations to be linearly dependent. And I am sure you have done this in your uh, previous algebra that the determinant of the coefficients which is written from this equation as 4, 5, 2, y, 2, 3.
if you write this in the matrix form, this is what the equation is. The determinant of the coefficient matrix is the determinant 4, 5, 2, 3 is non-zero. It is 12 minus 10 which is 2 is equal to 2. Hmm? Therefore, for a homogeneous system of uh, coupled equations, the determinant if it is not 0, such a system does not have a solution, a non-trivial solution okay? and the trivial solutions are not relevant. So, let me do the same thing now. If I look at another, the same equation slightly different, let us assume that it is 2x plus 3y is equal to 0 and let us assume that 6x plus 9y is equal to 0. Okay. Now, it is obvious by looking at it straight away that the second equation is 3 times the first equation 2x plus 3y is equal to 0. Therefore, these equations are not linearly independent, they are linearly dependent. And you know if you write the determinant, you write the determinant then it is 2, 3, 6, 9 that is equal to 0 because you know one row is nothing but the multiple of another row and determinants are such determinants of 0 values. The moment you have this, this is actually one equation only 2x plus 3y is equal to 0. Therefore, you have a solution x is equal to minus 3 by 2y. All it tells you is that x is in terms of y, but it does not tell you what are x and what x and y are. Therefore, one variable is undetermined or indeterminate, you have to give a some, some number and then you have to use x. If, if y is 5, x will be minus 15 by 2, but that is a solution. The solution is that unless y is 0, x is not 0. So, this is a linear system of equations. Okay. Now, homogeneous equations. If you have a, a system of inhomogeneous or non-homogeneous equations, you do not have a problem. You have to actually have the inverse of the matrix to be taken, non-homogeneous system. So, let us do that 2x plus 3y is equal to 5 and 4x plus, uh, it cannot be 2x plus 3y and 4x plus 6y let us write 5y is equal to 4. Okay. Now, these have a solution in the sense that this is a matrix equation 2, 3, 4, 5, x, y is equal to 5, 4 and therefore, if you call this as a and you call this as phi is equal to some constant, then you only have to multiply this with an a inverse a phi is equal to c. Therefore, it is important for you to have an A inverse here, that is also A inverse. Okay. So, A inverse is defined only if the determinant is non-zero. Therefore, you see this system of equations cannot have the determinant to be 0 if it is non-homogeneous. So, these things are elementary algebraic equations and things you must remember. And now, when we go to the uh, eigenvalue eigenvector problem, we are generalizing this to a much larger and a specific type of uh, systems and the specific type of system is that if you have a matrix A and if you have a column something like x y A being a 2 by 2 matrix. So, let us write to this in terms of uh, uh, specific forms. Okay. A 1 1, A 1 2, A 2 1, A 2 2. The eigenvalue eigenvector problem is a specific set of equations which is a constant lambda times x and y. So, what you have is if you write to this as a and if you write this x as a column vector x y as a column vector given by the operator by the vector x and you write this as lambda x then this is called an eigenvalue equation. And the eigenvalue equation is such that x is known as the eigenvector and lambda is known as the eigenvalue. Okay. So, what you have is you are trying to find out a solution x and y such that A acting on that solution gives you a constant times that solution itself. That is a very special case and those special cases are most important in quantum mechanics including the Hamiltonian equation. So, let us do in this case itself, let us try and find out what the eigenvalues are. Okay. 
Now, please remember if you expand to this a 1 1 x plus a 1 2 y is equal to lambda x. First row you remember two matrices are equal only if the elements on both sides are corresponding elements are equal. So, the second one is a 2 1 x plus a 2 2 y is equal to lambda y and therefore, you have a 1 1 minus lambda x plus a 1 2 y is equal to 0, a 2 1 plus a 2 2 minus lambda this is x and this is y is equal to 0. Now, we are back to the homogeneous equation and therefore, you see the reason for the previous uh, analysis is that we used that right away that we have to have the determinant of the coefficient matrix to be 0, which is a 1 1 minus lambda a 1 2 a 2 2 a 2 1 and a 2 2 minus lambda this determinant should be 0 for this to have a non trivial solution x and y that is both x and y are not 0 that is what is non trivial. Now, this is very easy the determinant is easy to expand. So, you have a 1 1 minus lambda times a 2 2 minus lambda minus a 1 2 a 2 1 is equal to 0 which is now a quadratic equation in lambda. So, this is lambda square minus lambda times a 1 1 plus a 2 2 then uh, plus you have a 1 1 a 2 2 minus a 1 2 a 2 1 that is equal to 0. This is the uh, standard form of a x square plus b x plus c therefore, the solution you know lambda can be written as minus b where the coefficient is this one therefore, it is a 1 1 plus a 2 2 by 2 minus b by 2 plus or minus b square minus 4 a c if you remember c is a is 1 and c is this if you remember a x square plus b x plus c is equal to 0 x is minus b by 2 a plus or minus square root of b square minus 4 a c by 2. Okay. Keep that in mind then you have the solution therefore, this is plus or minus square root of b square is a 1 1 plus a 2 2 whole square minus 4 a 1 1 a 2 2 plus 4 a 1 2 a 2 1. These are the two solutions with a plus or minus. Immediately you see that if for example, we started with the matrix a 1 1 with a 1 2 being 0 and a 2 1 being 0, if we started with a diagonal matrix you knew that the diagonal elements are the eigenvalues because if these two are 0 you can see that this goes to 0. This goes to 0 and therefore, this one is a 1 1 minus a 2 2 whole square and the square root of this is going to give you a 1 1 plus a 2 2 1 by 2 plus or minus a 1 1 minus a 2 2 1 by 2 and the two solutions are a 1 1 and a 2 2. If these elements were 0 you have you are back to the original solution, but if these elements are not 0 which is what we are interested in therefore, let me undo this highlight okay. 4 a 1 2 a 2 1 then the actual solution is what I have written down. So, there are two solutions and therefore, there are two eigenvalues namely lambda 1 is a 1 1 plus a 2 2 by 2 plus square root of a 1 1 minus a 2 2 whole square plus 4 a 1 2 a 2 1 1 by 2 okay. and the other solution is lambda 2 is a 1 1 plus a 2 2 by 2 minus 1 half square root of the same thing a 1 1 minus a 2 2 whole square plus 4 a 1 2 a 2 1. Okay. So, these are the two eigenvalues. So, 
So, if we go back to the original matrix equation, we had A11, A12, A21, A22, x y is equal to 0. Now, sorry, is equal to uh, now lambda 1 x y and there is also another solution a 1 1 a 1 2 a 2 1 a 2 2. Now, we may want to call it as x prime y prime lambda 2 x prime y prime since lambda 1 and lambda 2 are not, not the same. Okay. And we will worry about what is known as a non-degenerate eigenvalue system. That is the eigenvalues are all different, they are not uh, equal to each other or few of them equal to each other. All those cases we will not worry about it. Let us assume that the eigenvalues are different. Therefore, we have two solutions x y is one eigenvector associated with eigenvalue lambda 1. x prime y prime is another eigenvector associated with another eigenvalue lambda 2. Lambda 2. So, a 2 by 2 system has two eigenvalues. In general, this is true that an n by n system has n possible eigenvalues, some of which may be equal to each other, the others and it may also have a completely non-degenerate solution and so on. But this is what is the eigenvalue, eigenvector problem. Now, having done this, what are the eigenvectors? How do we get x and y? How do we get them? X prime and y prime. Okay. So, quite obviously it says that a 1 1 minus lambda 1 x plus a 1 2 y is equal to 0. That is the first eigenvalue equation and then the second row equation will be a 2 1 x plus a 2 2 minus lambda 1 y is equal to 0. It is not necessary for us to verify that the determinant is 0 because that is how we got the eigenvalues in the first place okay, lambda 1 because the determinant is what we had it a 1 1 minus lambda 1 a 1 2 a 2 1 a 2 2 minus lambda 1 lambda 1. This determinant is anyway 0 because lambda 1 is a solution of this equation. Therefore, we do not need to worry about it. Therefore, if you have to write it, you can write x is equal to minus a 1 2 by a 1 1 minus lambda 1 times y. The second solution is not independent of the first one. You do not need to solve the second equation. This is all you need to solve. Therefore, we know x in terms of y and now you have to choose a y. Eigenvectors are always or most of the time in linear algebra and also in quantum mechanics are defined in such a way that if you have an eigenvector x, we use what are called normalized eigenvectors. The normalization if x and y are real, the normalization essentially means x square plus y square is chosen to be 1. Therefore, no matter what I choose x or y to be, I have to set to the square of x and the square of y the sum to be 1 and therefore, that constant goes away when we when you do that choice. We will see some numerical examples in the next session and you see this requirement that the eigenfunctions be normalized removes the uncertainty or the indeterminacy of these variables, one of the variables x or y. It makes it very clear that x and y are proportional and they also satisfy the second condition that x square plus y square is equal to 1. Therefore, x and y have very specific values. Therefore, the eigenvector is precisely defined and it is defined as two different eigenvectors for two different eigenvalues. This is what I wanted to do. This is a very simple system 2 by 2 and let us stop here and in the next part of it, we will see some examples of doing this for the very elementary matrices that I have uh, already introduced to you, the Pauli spin 
uh, angular momentum uh, matrices the sigma x, sigma y and sigma z and let us look at the eigenvalue properties as well as the eigenvectors and learn a little bit more and also generalize this to other higher dimensions. Okay. Until then, uh, uh, thank you, we will stop here for a break.